Why, hello there. So recently I've been really into stable diffusion, uh, which is a way of generating art with AI. So there's a model that's been trained to understand the relationship between um, text and images, and then it can um, kind of, it starts with a bunch of noise, and then it figures out how to um, kind of turn that noise along with a text prompt that you enter into a picture. Uh, so it's pretty awesome, and it's pretty incredible that you can fit, um, you know, create all kinds of crazy pictures and combinations of things um, into uh, a file that's basically less than five gigabytes worth of uh, data um, and obviously a program to use it. So I thought I would just walk you through how I do a little bit of generation and uh, kind of show you how it works. And um, I'm not going to get into detail about all the settings and stuff, I'm more just going to sort of explain what I'm doing as I go along. So I'm using a version of this uh, which is from called Stable Diffusion Web UI and it's uh, from Automatic 1111. So it's been under really heavy development and uh, it's got some pretty good features now and even though my computer here is um, running f uh, 16 gigabytes of system memory and I have a, a NVIDIA GeForce GTX um, 970 GPU and I only have four gigabytes of video rent uh, memory but it actually runs pretty well I can generate at uh, less than two seconds per step so so I, I'm thinking I'm gonna today gonna make a uh, some sort of desktop background so something that's in the end I want something that's kind of I can crop or scale to a 16 by 9 ratio and um, that would be you know fit on my 1920 by 1080p monitor so let's go for something kind of landscapey so uh, let's say I don't know maybe a pine forest in winter so say say we um, how about a a frozen lake. So say we'll say um, a frozen lake in winter, surrounded by pine by a pine tree forest, um, snow capped mountains in the distance overcast gray clouds uh, and we'll throw in say scenic maybe um, panoramic if I can figure out how to spell it panoramic I think that's right uh, so let's start with that, and what I'll do is I'll start with, uh, I should probably figure out how to pronounce this at some point. I call it, I think it's Euler? Euler? Anyway, I'll start with 15 steps because that generates pretty quickly, and uh, that way I can pump out a bunch of versions of it and see kind of what strikes my fancy. I know kind of roughly what I have in mind, but uh, we'll see which one kind of fits that. So now generate. And uh, if we bring up the window here, you can see a little bit of, on how it's, uh, you see the video memory climb a little bit here as it gets going. Usually the first time it takes a little bit of time to get it fired up. There we go. Just chugging away here. Mm 
and we're done. So open up. So you can hear, you can kind of step through them, but I'll open up sort of the summary view here. So I was kind of, kind of thinking a bit of a higher, kind of looking down into a valley. So none of these are quite what I had in mind. Um, I kind of wanted it to be further away. So uh, let's let's try it this way. So uh, frozen lake uh, in a valley. Frozen Lake and a valley surrounded by a pine tree forest. Okay, and we'll say, um, probably just throw in winter, just to winter snow, just to kind of make it nice. Nudge it in that direction. That's a little bit closer to what I want, but still not quite. So sometimes you can kind of force that image to be adapted, but in this case, I think they're kind of two different. So I'm just going to try generating some more. I think I'll even drop the steps down a little bit. I uh, could probably get a pretty decent idea if it's heading the right direction. And generate. Right. Okay, what do we got here? Okay, so this this first one is too, and that's too too nearby. That's a little bit better, but still feels a little bit close. Mm, that's more like it. Yeah, that's definitely what kind of what I had in mind. The lake down in the valley from a distance. That's pretty good too. But I like this one that's more feels colder and wintier and more overcast. Usually what I do then is I send to image to image. So this one now um, I can use this to uh, as sort of a, a good starting point. So now it, it kind of has both the prompt and it has a, a pretty concrete picture of kind of what I want it to nudge it towards. So I'm going to create a few variations of this now and see kind of um, which ones of those I like best. Uh, and then we can kind of refine that. So for this now I'm going to switch over to just a Euler here and I'm going to jack up the steps because now that I kind of know what I like I don't mind spending a little bit more time generating something a bit prettier. Uh, and I'm going to I'll just generate maybe four versions of it again and in this case I'm going to this is sort of the amount of attention that it gives to the prompt. Uh, so I'm going to I usually increase that a little bit when I'm um, kind of refining something. I should try to kind of lock it into what I've told it to do. Um, and then for denoising strength, um, because it's already pretty close to what I want, I'm going to denoise it a little bit less. Um, I'd like the, this, the water to be a little bit more frozen, really, so I'm not sure if I will be able to totally do that. Um, Uh, with with this picture because it's normally if this were frozen probably be really white whereas right now it's not white at all and usually the color doesn't change drastically so I might have to edit that if I wanted it to be frozen but we'll give it a whirl and see kind of what it does and uh, and then go from there and we're done let's see what this turned out so you can see how it it kind of takes it has a general still the same kind of general feel, um, but it is it kind of tweaks it in different ways. So let's see, we got that one. We have this one. I'm not sure. I'm really a fan of the 
foreground here so much. Um, yeah, and sometimes some none of these are really an improvement over the original. Um, definitely liking some of the mountains in the background a bit better. Not a huge fan of the bank here too much. That's more a little bit more interesting. Out of these, I think I think I like this one the best. Mountains kind of neat. I like it a little bit maybe hazier, but. Um, you can see how from the noise uh, the, how this is sort of a, a, a lot more crisp um, whereas the initial one it was not made with very many steps it was made with I think only yeah 10 steps so with uh, 40 steps it, it takes this and refines it a lot and makes it a lot more crisp so this one's pretty neat it's definitely not frozen uh, the water um, but it is pretty interesting so then what we can do is we, if we want to say, well, I really do want it to be frozen, um, we could try editing it in um, a graphic editor. Is We can take this picture and uh, open it in our editing software. So let me go to the output folder here. So I use GIMP for this. Oops. open with and fire it up here okay so then what we need to do is uh, it's not going to be able to figure out how to make this white on its own too quick so what we're going to do is just kind of brush in this and just whiten it up. So we can either, well, the best way of doing this is actually to use the lighten tool. We'll just kind of like go over this. And just kind of make the whole business a little bit lighter than it was initially. And then I think what we might do too, instead of saying a frozen river, we might say frozen pond, because uh, probably ponds tend to freeze quicker than rivers, so there might not be as many um, pictures of a frozen river. So even though stable diffusion, you can say, well, it can generate things that are not like that. It's never seen a picture like that before. Um, you know, like it can generate a picture of an astronaut riding a horse. Uh, I'm not in space, and I'm not sure if maybe there's pictures that it's been trained on like that, but it can it can synthesize things that are just you know haven't really been seen before, but it still needs to it's been trained on different pictures, so there's still things that it's sort of maybe outside of its uh, experience to some degree, and then it might struggle with making some of those things if it isn't given a little bit more guidance so Hopefully here, by just kind of lightening this up a bit, we can help nudge it in that way. And sometimes it doesn't work, and you say you just kind of have to give up on it. Um, so I feel like this is not really quite blue enough. So I might just try to do a little bit of that. Uh, so I'll just give a little bit more of a fuzz to the edge here. Uh, and you don't have to be too fiddly with this because in the end of the day it's going to kind of do its own thing with it so it's kind of just have to be you can be kind of rough and crude with it because this is not the final product it's just uh, sort of a guidance so let's kind of draw around here okay and now I can tweak it and say I want to make it a little bit more blue. Um, I'm not totally sure that's the best. Probably colorize is better. Uh, colorize here. So here you can pick a color. So um, in this case, I'll just pick a 
I got some blue like over here, say. And okay. So it takes a little bit. I'm gonna make the saturation a bit higher. So obviously that's like way too much, but you could probably make it like that. A bit. Uh, and then if you, I mean, you could have it like really dark, but in this case, I want it to be fairly light because we want it to be kind of like icy, right? Um, so I think that's an improvement. It's kind of more blue. I'm going to turn down the saturation a little bit more. And there we go. And now I gotta just, I'll just export it. Usually I just add edit to the end of the name. And say, yep. All right. So now what we can do is we can say, um, I'm just going to close this guy, my edited version, and pop it in here. So you can see that this is slightly lighter color. So now I think instead of saying frozen, I'll say frozen, frozen pond, and I'll say frozy icy pond, just to try to kind of really encourage it that we want this to be ice. And now I'm going to say denoising strength quite a bit less because at this point I don't really want it to diverge from that too much. I kind of like it's pretty good the way it is. I just want it to be more icy. Um, and I'm going to jack this up a little bit higher. And um, I think that's probably good. And generate. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, so that seems pretty decent. We got more like icy chunks, it looks like. Kind of like laying around in here. So that's, that's pretty good. That one's... I don't really like this. It looks kind of strange here with these two trees out in the middle. That one looks like it, it could be ice, but it also, because of this is kind of really white here, it kind of feels like it might not so much be ice. So, I'm not maybe 100% happy with it, but I think, uh, I think this first one is probably about my favorite. You can see here how it, how the variations work too a little bit. So this is sort of like a lighter green color. So here, uh, in this one it's it's wooded and here it's wooded as well but here it kind of translated more like it looks like more like um you, know, you would say like grass or heather or something like that more low shrubbery or something rather than like bigger trees so it's kind of interesting and, and here it almost looks like it could be um, kind of like a steeper terrain so yeah kind of interesting how it's turned out. So then sometimes you might say, well, I like this part. Uh, I like this part of the picture, but, um, you know, I, I also, I like this part of that picture. So then you can, you could edit it together potentially. Um, so we could see about that. Let's see. Also the, the reflections here are a little bit hinky. I feel like the reflections in this picture are actually a little bit better seem to match up more. Um, so we could see. Um, sometimes what you can do too is then you can you could use uh, in painting. Um, so for example we can grab and go to in paint here. So then I can say I want to I like most of the picture but I want to change one part. So for example, what we really want to do is we want to tweak the pond here, make it look like ice. Uh, so now we could say something like a, a pond goes 
frozen over with thick ice. Um, thick ice, and we'll say surrounded by pine trees. And we don't really need most of the rest of that because those are elements that are kind of outside of outside of the scope of what this in painting is. Uh, so then I'll say uh, original. So I, I want to I want to kind of work with what's there, but I want to refine it. Uh, in point at full resolution, it just gets a bit better quality. Um, supposedly DDIM here is best at in painting, so I'll use that. And um, I'm going to, to probably crank up the denoising strength to maybe 50. So that'll that'll make it a little bit. It'll give more variation. I was kind of curious to see what it will turn out with that. And go. And we're done. All right, what do we got here? So it looks like still this is, this to me I don't really like because it, it looks like this is sort of water and these are parts of ice. I want the whole business to be frozen. And that seems a little bit closer. Those are really quite like I was, uh, was hoping for though. So it looks like the edges here are kind of frozen but the middle part isn't. So sometimes it's a matter of saying well it's kind of good enough. That's right so this is for whites or my desktop background so I want to make it wider. So I think what I'm going to do next actually is to do what's called out painting. So here I in painted by just touching a specific part of it, which none of these actually I don't think is much of an improvement over the original. Uh, but now what I'm going to do is called outpainting. So what we can do here is you can say outpainting and I want it to extend. So this is a way of saying I want to add to the picture. So I think um, adding to the left is probably pretty straightforward. It'll just add more forest. Um, maybe not super interesting. So I think I'd probably prefer to extend it to the right first. So let's say I want to extend it to the right. Uh, usually the defaults here are fine. It says recommended settings. Uh, so I'll do that. And denoising strings at 8. And uh, sampling steps at 80 to 100 because I'm impatient. And frankly, it doesn't always seem to make a huge amount of difference. I'm just going to put it at 60. And I'll probably do a pretty decent job, even 50 actually probably do a pretty easy job. And I'm going to give it batch count 4 still because it will create a few variations. And I'm going to put, rather than having it just in this really basic version, I'm going to uh, kind of restore it to what it was so that it has the, the big picture as it were so it knows what it's trying to accomplish. And go. And we're done. Let's see what it hath wrought. All right, so we got some really trees that are totally don't look like what we want. That's better. Uh, that's definitely better. I don't really want like foreground weirdness too close to the camera here. And that was pretty good, but these trees are obviously way out of scale, so. That one seems by far the best. It kind of concludes the edge of the pond there. So I like that one. So I'm going to say then send it image to image. So now we got a wider version. We have to increase the width here so that we're matching. And you can see it has this handy little deal. You can tell it's good. So um, I'm inclined now, I would say, want to outpaint to the left. Uh, so basically leave all the other settings the same and say generate. Now at this point, uh, if we're done here, so what we need 
is in the end of the day, we want to have, say, 5, 12 divided by 9 times 16. So what we need is something that's about uh, 9, 10 pixels wide. So if we say uh, 640 plus 128, All right, so we need to extend it basically this this time now, and then maybe roughly once more, twice more, something like that. Um, or we could do a bigger extension too. And then once we're done, we can upscale the whole business so that we have a high resolution. Because at this point, this isn't really like this is that's the actual resolution, but we want it to fill the whole screen. We don't want to have to just have it blurred. So, but that's pretty easy to do once we have a um, a good picture. There's no point in wasting time upscaling something until I have something that we like to begin with. So you can see here it's it's turning along pretty quickly. So on average, uh, even though I have a kind of an older GPU, it's still with uh, four gigabytes of uh, video memory. It's still able to pump them out at these settings at um, under two seconds per iteration, which is usually pretty common. And I have other stuff running on the computer. I'm actually recording this via OBS, so that's running. I've got a web page open and my email open and such. Uh, so it does a pretty good job. All right. So that's definitely off. Um, not too bad, but again, I don't really want stuff in the foreground. Uh, kind of hinky, but better. And again, way too much stuff in the foreground. I mean, that could be cool, but it's not really what I'm looking for. So this is probably the best bet. Not quite what I want, but probably good enough. Um, especially if this, we could always in-paint this to clean it up a bit. So I'm going to do one more. Uh, extension to the left and I'm gonna say I'm gonna change the prompt a little bit here so I'm gonna say um, a pine tree forest in a valley a pine tree forest in the valley so that it isn't getting trying to make ponds, more ponds and such, otherwise it might try to do that. So we want to just focus on this being a forest at this point. So now I'm going to uh, do this again. So let's do that here. 142. That'll do it. And let's say go. You can see here that uh, 510 is technically, or 512 technically, is not quite 1080p. So we could in paint, you know, along the top of the bottom, or I mean out paint, sorry, along the top of the bottom just to add a little bit at the end. Uh, so we might do that. Obviously, the sky is like super easy to extend, so that's probably the best bet. Stable diffusion doesn't do well sometimes with like nice sharp edges on things. So like, um, like for example, um, like a straight fence or something, it can sometimes get that confused. Or things like um, keys on a keyboard, or piano keys, or stuff like that. That's very even. Um, but sort of more noisy things like um, you know, like the the detail in or the in trees or the sort of the texture of mountains or things like clouds it does that very well um, but they're also these are very forgiving because your eye isn't expecting things to be like straight lines and even it's more of a noisy picture to begin with so it, it really excels at that and we're done let's see what we got here Okay, so that's that's not doesn't have enough woods enough. It doesn't really fit, and the angles and stuff are off. 
that one's pretty cool with the smoke and stuff. There's some clouds, but don't really not really fitting. Uh hmm. Yeah, so neither of these are really totally feeling it. This bottom part is nice, but this top part looks kinda out of place. So maybe we can kind of rescue that a little bit with in painting. Well, actually, probably the best bet here is actually to edit it ourselves because I think it's going to struggle to fix that. So if we hop over to GIMP again, and I'll just manually tweak this. It's just a lot simpler. So here, what we want to do is I kind of like the general idea here, so I'm going to use our uh, cloning tool and I'll just kind of like clone this over here like so. No, so I think we'll just kind of have this mount slope up and then maybe make it kind of a little bit or whatever. Kind of fill in some of this, kind of blend it and uh, we don't again. We don't have to be too careful because it'll kind of like fix a lot of that. Uh, now for this, I'll make a bit of a smaller brush. And just kind of like draw some of that in here. And then I'm not sure if I want maybe a, a nice snowy mountain would be nice there. So let's see. For this, we'll just take our paintbrush and it'll just paint this in. Again, we can be pretty, kind of pretty crude here. Take a little bit more, lighten it up a little bit with some of this. And use our, our smudge, smudge brush here to kind of smear it around a little bit. And then I think, I think what we'd like to do is I'd like to have kind of a, a bit of a white like a real snowy area. So I'm just going to say a nice jagged edge here. And we'll just throw in a little bit of that. Uh, So we'll just do a little bit of that at the bottom, and then I'm going to make this try to make the sky a little bit darker here, so it contrasts a little bit nicer against it. Sometimes, otherwise, it'll tries to kind of make it one one business. A little bit of contrast helps to that, and I think I'm going to sharpen it up a little bit too, so that we have a, bit of a nicer crisp edge. Okay, so you might say that looks terrible. Well, it does kind of look a bit terrible, but uh, hopefully with stable diffusion, we'll be able to rescue it a little bit. Uh, and in theory, you could kind of just extend uh, this manually in here instead of outpainting it, I suppose. But um, and maybe that would be the best bet. You could say like uh, we want it to be. Uh, we could do that here. We could say I want it to be um, 9 and 10, I think we were saying. So we could say like that. I'm sure that does look kind of crude and terrible, but we can probably get away with a fair bit of this. So this looks like a kind of a nice tall mountain peak. Um, now we can just export as an edit here. And now we'll fire this over back into, into here. And I think we'll just do it. We can probably safely throw it over. Um, Yeah, actually, I think we probably, the best bet is actually to in-paint. 
because then we can we know that we kind of like this side of things so we can just deal with this uh, so in this case we don't want it to outpaint anymore we want this to be I guess 960 so we need to actually edit this a little bit more to be the right size I think in this case actually what we're going to do is just I'm going to scale it up so I'm going to say image I'm just going to type in what I want. So if we want to do, double it later on, we want 1920 divided by 2, so 960. And then we want uh, 1080, so we divide by 2, so 540. So actually we're, we're good there. So we can say scale. It's just going to scale it up a little bit. Um, again, they will, the fusion should be able to so that and it's going to smooth some of these harsh edges here a little bit just so that it doesn't try to translate that into straight lines obviously don't really want that I'm just going to smudge it around a little bit like that should hopefully be able to fix all that um, okay and I'll put it again there we are. So now we should be able to have one that's basically a quarter of the size that we need in the end. So when we upscale it twice the width and twice, twice the height, then we should be good. So I'll drag this back over into our in-painting here. And I'm just going to in-paint that side of things. So get a nice big brush. And we just go over here. With uh, let's say one a snowy I think I'll say snowy mountain. We don't need two because there's only one mountain that we care about. Um, and otherwise we should be good. We're using original and I think we'll say that one there. And then we're going to reduce this down to say 30. Should be enough to. It's a pretty good denoiting strength. We'll drop that down to maybe 40 because it's pretty close to what we want. And so generate. And we're done. Well, that's not too bad, although we turned my mountain into a cloud. Uh, not too bad either. Not really a fan of this part here, and obviously it still didn't keep my mountain. And that's that's pretty good. I feel like that cloud up here is actually kind of neat. But I think this one's still better. Oh, that's a bit more soft edge, so it fits in with the rest of the picture a little bit nicer. And I see it's got a little bit of a, a weird stripe at the side there. Well, that one's got a bit smudge, so it didn't totally take out my smudge that I left in it. So I think I'm going to go for this one. So now we basically got kind of what we want. Now it has a bit of a weird edge on it there so I might have to fix that before upscaling it because otherwise it might struggle to uh, it might struggle to, to get rid of that. So I'm going to just clean that up first and then we'll upscale it and then we should be golden. It kind of describes what it's doing. So it's just getting started over again here. So because there's a tile overlap of 64, the actual chunk that we're going to work on with stable diffusion has to be 64 pixels uh, wider and higher so that the overlap will work properly. So here we're, we got a total of 136 steps um, to work on. 
and because the denoising strength is actually fairly low here, uh, even though I set it to 80 steps, it doesn't have to do as much work because it's only noising it up a little bit. Um, so that's why it's, uh, it really doesn't have a ton of, of steps to do. Usually when I'm upscaling, I, I put the denoising pretty low because otherwise it could uh, spend a bunch of time upscaling it and then end up with a version that's quite different from what you were actually wanting. So this way we kind of lock it into something that's pretty much what we wish for. And we're back. Okay. So you can see the final two pictures here. So I'm not really a huge fan of how hazy some of these turned out. A little bit more hazy than I would have liked. Um, let's see if this one, and in here this definitely is kind of struggled and got pretty muddied up. So that one's definitely better there. So it is a bit hazy, but I don't know. It's not too bad. I guess you could just say it's a different type of tree. This one too, the edges here are really sharp, uh, which I don't really care for. Seem a little bit more natural here. So that's why I usually make two. I figure may as well just let it run through. So I think this is, to me, that's a pretty good picture. So this is kind of, not maybe exactly what I had in mind initially, but the general idea. Um, never really kind of got the icy pond quite that I wanted, but uh, it's pretty good. I would say this is worthy of a desktop background. And if we look at the actual picture itself, so I think this is the this, is this first one here. So you can see this is 1920 by 1152, so we just have to do a tiny bit of cropping and we'll have a perfectly sized desktop background. So in this case I think the right side is a little bit more interesting. So we'll crop it here to 1920, or actually we can crop the top off. So 1080. There we are, 1080. Um, well, we can obviously we can crop the bottom instead, but the sky is kind of dull, so we'll do that. And then we can just save it as a JPEG. And there we go. Here we are. So here we got our 1080p desktop background that we made f according to our own ideas. And uh, this is completely unique. There's no other picture like this. It's not in real life, and no one has created something like this before.